Welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan for episode 4 with me, Mr. Sealy P. September 2 dawns here in Edgewater, Saskatchewan and um, I'm not doing another night in the tent. We're not going to do it. Um, so yesterday, two harvest contracts I did in the end, both for flax. Uh, so we're up to 165,000, money's gone up a little bit again. Not massively, but it has gone up. Um, my wheat off of the, one of the fields I bought has all been bought back so the first bin's got the peas in from one field and then this bin has got 17,698 litres of wheat in it we're going to do some work around the yard today hopefully some work out on the wheat field because I want to get the um, the straw collected and bought in there's something we're going to sell something a couple of things we're going to buy we're going to yeah we're going to do some work so tent's going to go we'll pack that away done we're going to be doing something a bit a little bit different we're going to be using well we're going to be recycling bins we're going to recycle a bin so i said about build, building a house on the front of here um that stuart suggested and i liked the idea but it was because we had these bins i thought you know what we're going to do uh, down the road we saw it on the way in when we arrived in the land rover we're going to drive out that way because i'm going to sell the plow because i bought the second plow and this it's got that weird situation going at the moment with the three-point link not showing kind of thing. Um, a lot of people suggested a trailed lifter, which I actually think that's not a bad idea. Um, the plough that I had originally bought, I wanted to try something different. But the only problem with this was, in the ploughing contracts I did, this kept missing bits all over the place. It, it Yeah, I, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, because I've got the second plough, I'm going to take this back, sell it, I'm going to buy a trailed lifter, and we're going to bring the other plough back up. I'm going to sort out leasing a windrower and a forage harv a forage harvester, a forage trailer. So we're going to get the straw bought back up to here. Um, in the time it takes to do all of that, hopefully the guys at the bin site that we're going to go past will have taken down at least the bin we want. And that will be coming up here. We're going to be using a bin. So we're going to have a, a grain bin converted into a house. That's the plan. But what we're also going to have put in, I want to put in a workshop. And what else was I going to do? Oh yeah, uh, like a hayloft. Kind of a hayloft. It's, it's a forage storage type situation. So yeah, we've got a few things. I've just got to decide where I want to put everything. I think the workshop, I want to probably put the... the the house, grain bin house, sort of here. I want it facing the light, so when the light goes across the sky, you know, the sun's up, we get some nice light on it, so probably about here. I'm thinking the workshop trigger over here by the quonset, and then the forage... Oh, maybe over here. Or maybe over the back there, I'm just trying to decide. We are going to have to look at weeders and all sorts of stuff. So what we'll do, we get a few of these jobs done first, um, as we've gone into September 2, yeah, I need to weed all of that. I'm going to plough my fields, but I'm... Oh, mulching. Oh, I was going to get a mulcher as well, wasn't I? So many jobs to do. But that's all right. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of cultivating contracts that have popped up. One on field 6 that pays... Well, it'll pay about 26 grand. 
God, I did it the wrong way around. I'm so stupid. And I thought what I would do is, um, on one of the contracts, borrow equipment, and the other one not borrow equipment and use the same equipment. Um, and I stupidly clicked on borrow equipment on the one that charges you more for it. I don't know why I did that, but I just wasn't paying attention. So yeah, we'll get this taken down, get that sold. I can't remember, I've got the list of stuff that I want. So this is where I'm at now, see? We're making lists, lists of things we need, lists of things we need to do in, well, not necessarily a specific order. It would help. Um, I looked at various different wind rowing options and what I'm thinking is, it's a trailed wind rower. Um, manufactured by Hispano. And then I can attach the forage trailer behind that. We might do a few trips backwards and forwards, but that's not a problem. I, won't, I can't afford really to get a massive one. It depends how much I spend on the various different buildings. And that's the thing. All the money I'm making, it's all getting put straight back in. For infrastructure, machinery, equipment, whether it's leasing or whatever it is, it's all coming back in. So that's, yeah. I love it. Honestly, I love this. The view out across there, look at that. And I said in the last episode, I was really hoping we'd get some big old weeding jobs, but I haven't had any pop up yet. Because they could be nice little, uh, nice little earners. Get myself a big old mechanical. We Actually, there aren't that many big mechanical weeders, are there? I don't think there are. I guess I could get a herbicide sprayer and do a bit of that, but. Yeah doesn't always go down too well again we've got uh, we are precision farming in inverted commas I'm not I'm not focusing so heavily on the fact that I need to do everything exactly right to get my environmental score up and have it all perfect I'm not I'm just going to do what I normally do if my environmental score comes up great if it doesn't not the end of the world I'm not too bothered about that so uh, yeah anyway we'll come past the bins in just a moment so like I say, it's one of our, one, our neighbours, I guess, one of our, our new neighbours. They're having their whole bin site taken down. I don't know if they're having it moved or not, um, including the grain leg. You can just see it come into view. So what we're, we've, what I'm offering is to buy one of the bins. And then we'll do our, uh, do our thing. It's an unusual place to have it. I, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is it an unusual place to have it? Because it's not actually at a farm site per se, it's just a, a bin set up and grain leg just kind of there. Yeah, so we're going to have one of those. I'll see you back at the store in a moment and we will do this swapping around, um, switcheroo with various different bits of equipment and uh, see how we get. And I think what I might do, buy the bits of equipment I need lease the windrower and forage trailer and I'll do that because that's kind of on the way back then when we get back up to the farm we'll get the forage um, silo forage bunker I'm not quite sure how to refer to it really back at the store again I can see myself spending quite a bit of time down here so this we're going to get rid of sell how much for oh that's not too bad 27,487 well it cost us 39 something like that uh, and then we will go across to here and we need to get what's this under miscellaneous the old trailed lifter there we go oh but is this do they have PTOs I'm not sure if they do do they I don't need to for a plow I know that I'm just thinking of other stuff how much is that? 7,500. We can afford that. Let's buy the trailed lifter. That'll work for the plow. I want to get lease the wind rower. I'm going to get um, that one, I think. Does that say 10.3 to 20 meters? Whoa, okay. Wow. 10.3, 12, 16, 20 metres. That's quite expensive though. I 
I, I might just go for that one. I think 10 meters is going to be fine for what I need to do. Don't need to worry about any of that business. How much is that to lease? 2,000. We'll do that. Oh, I could have used uh, no, that's all right. And then forage wagon. And I don't need to go massive on this. Well, I could go a bit bigger. What do I reckon? I'll be mad leaving the straw behind because I don't know what I'm going to end up using it for. I could use it for bedding. I could use it for total mix ration. I'd, it's always, but if you've got the access to it, to have it and use it, store it away somewhere and then you can worry about it later on. What's that one? 35,000 litres. Lease that. Yep. That's both of those done. So, first things first. Start that up. The sun will come out tomorrow. Hopefully it will come out today. It seems a little bit dim over here, but anyway. <laughs> a little bit like me. A little bit dim over here. So hopefully when we come to doing our next load of ploughing, this won't miss anything. If we get any other ploughing contracts come up. Perfect, look at that. Right, awesome. It will attach onto the back of the tractor, I know it will, it just doesn't look right. Um, and so many people messaged me and said, what about a trail lifter? And the weird thing was, I'd forgotten about these ones. There's these, is it Schnuffelstuck? There's the, the modded one, I can't remember who it's by now. There's the Schnuffelstuck version. And I thought, oh, I'll choose one of those, that's pretty cool. You can see there, we've got our cultivating contract equipment. So I'll get onto that. Hopefully by the end of the episode, at least we'll get started. Do that. And that. And let's go. Let's get her done. The weird thing is, no one was saying the other day about audio books. When I was doing the harvest contracts yesterday, um, off camera, and I had my audio book going, and today I'm already thinking, what job can I take on? I need to find a really big job because I'm, I'm really, I'm really got into my audio book again. So I want to, I want to get, you know, I want to listen to what's going to happen in the next bit. <laughs> so I'm finding myself things to do so I can listen to it. So yeah, the next thing will be once this is done, um, I'll need to sort out a mulcher. Again, I don't, I haven't got the money to buy one. Have I got the money to buy one? Oh, not really. Um, let's unfold that. Let's go to that. Turn it on. Pick up down. I haven't got access to the field. I know that. That's fine. Turn that on. Drop that down. If I can get three in, I don't think I can get three in. That's all right, two. Maybe I should have gone a little bit bigger, but this will work. I did think about grabbing a baler and baling it, and I thought, you know what? Let's do it loose for the time being. The forage storage is a nice cross between getting a multi-fruit silo and a hayloft, because it will take, um, I think it takes grass, hay, straw, um, I don't know if it takes chaff, but I think it takes total mix ration as well, which might come in quite handy. Let's get the lights in so I can see if I Just a little bit there. Right, let's do that. So I can avoid that tree if I can. Come on. That's better. I don't know, maybe I could get three in. Not quite. So yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not above leasing stuff. Oh that's a point. Hang on, hang on. Just so I remembered, we are um 
we're a new new date so what's available to lease oh no <laughs> i could buy that back um not lease buy cheap so what those always come in really handy don't they the auto load well, it's not the pickup one though is it which is a pity that's just not really anything i need off there it's funny how because uh, i did a lot of grass work and stuff on ballam road before i moved i'm shying away from it i'm thinking i don't really you know normally i would i would get myself some grass fields because sheep are quick and easy to say quick and easy not <laughs> and chickens i've got some i've got some wheat i can feed them so i thought you know you can get on to doing that really quickly get some sheep get a sheep penny and get some sheep going and i'm thinking oh yeah but I've done a lot of grass work and people will get bored of seeing that. But in all honesty, it's, it's still part and parcel of the farm. I'm still going to need to do grass. I'm going to need to do hay if I'm, if I'm going to do sheep. I know I said I'm probably going to do pigs, which I am. But I'm not just going to do pigs. I, mean, I suppose I could become the region's biggest pig farmer. Don't go. It's quite to plan. Just come back for that bit. So yeah, it's just, you know, you, I'm already thinking, oh yeah, but I've done some of that. But that, so what? It doesn't matter. Maybe if I decide later on, you know what, I'm going to do cows again. And it's, it was it was a nice, I, I liked doing the, the Pemberton stuff. And you know, you know why, if you watch the series, you know, you know my reasons why I wanted to do it and why I was enjoying doing it. But um, the same as when I came off of Silver Run, having done all the forestry, it's nice just to get back to doing some farming, you know, just farming jobs. Out in the fields, doing some farming stuff. I say farming. What What's considered farming? I, I don't know. It's different to everyone, isn't it? Nearly full. Do I drag the whole lot back? Right. So what we'll do is turn that off. Oh, I might as well. It seems to have spent ages disconnecting things. I oh, mind you, it'd be a little bit easier for you know what I am gonna. I I am gonna. I am gonna. Simply full reversing and stuff like that will make it a little bit easier when we get back to the yard. So, I'll see you back at the yard in a minute. Uh, we'll get the forage thing in, uh, workshop in. I think putting the, the bin in is going to be probably the last thing we end up doing, I suppose. And our little plot of land is taking shape. I always, I always love this point. This point when you're doing any farm, wherever you are, unless you spend, it's often it can be the landscape that will dictate how you build your farm. So where you're going to place things, if it, you know, sloped and stuff like that. And it's one thing I absolutely love when we're driving around in the UK, um, up in the Lake District and stuff like that. And, and no farm, no two farms are ever the same. And how, especially in the Lake District, where you've got a lot of real hilly terrain, mountainous terrain, and you see these farms, and they're kind of balanced almost precariously on hillsides and mountainsides, and you can see where they've built bits up and lowered things down, and you've got a farmyard that might be on three or four different levels as it kind of goes. I love that, that the landscape will dictate how your farm is built. So this point is great, where you, you're... You're not sure how it's going to go and you could spend ages sitting down looking at your plot of land working out where i want to put stuff now but what if i do this moving on what if i do that what if i decide later on i, I kind of don't I, it's just okay i think that'll look good there bang let's do it there that'll fit there put it there i don't think too far ahead because you can always move things around if you need to at a later date or buy a bit more land or you know do landscaping or whatever you want to do so yeah again like i was saying about how we're kind of moving forward with everything we're doing it's all a bit fluid you know you just kind of 
just go with it what feels right at the time I mean that's how I do it anyway and having said all that <laughs> the whole rest of the journey up here I'm thinking should I put the forage um, silo forage storage where I said or should I put it somewhere I guess that field I've, I do, that I did by there well, I could have just extend that out. I have been looking at the kind of forestry situation. There's not a huge amount of forestry on here. It's funny, to build my workshop, I need a workshop. <laughs> not quite sure I'm going to do that. Um, unless I put my forage... Which I might put my forage here. Forage there. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll put it over here. Okay, now I've just had a panic. I can't remember. Was it putting in at the front and taking out the back? I can't, can't remember. We're about to find out. Now I'm thinking about where I'm going to place my house. So here is it around the other side we tip into. Oh, have I made a mistake here. I thought this had, a, had an update. Oh, there we go. In and out round the back, that's fine. That's big enough. Let's go and get some more. That's what I could do. Um, still have the light across here. If I move these two out of the way, just thinking if I, I can still have access to this if I bring a auger to take out of the bins out of this angle here, I could put my my new farmhouse here, couldn't I? That might work. Yeah, I'll move all that in a little while. Right. Rest of the forage. Oh, hang on. That's what I'm going to do. Workshop. Workshop trigger. Where are we going to put that? I think... Do I either want to put it across here, maybe? So we come out of the thing and do it there. Or do I want it in front? If I put it up there, it's kind of out of the way. It may be there. Actually, what I'm going to do, back up. Because I'm not sure where it's going to end up at the moment. We shall see. Let's get building, shall we? Okay, that's a bit further out. I'd say that's not too bad, really. Bring machine room vehicle. I was going to put it there, but I think it just it just came too far forward. So that's probably right there. Workshop, trigger, ramps. That was five grand. Can't odds that. Yeah, look. Hey, we're taking shape. Hey. Brilliant. Best character in cinematic history. <laughs> Babu Frick from Star Wars. <laughs> no, just me. But yeah, I think to, to crack me up. Anyway, sorry. Let's go and get the rest of it. Um, and then hopefully by the time that's done, those silos will be down. Get our silo delivered. Um, am I going to get on with the cultivating? I think I might do the cultivating contracts and then I'll get onto my mulching. I buy a mulcher, that's the thing. I can look at the various different prices. I keep falling back on, is it the Katrina? I use that one because it works really well. But there's the new ones by Matt Trucker 921 I think I might have a go at. 
um, maybe. Yeah. In the forage wagon, third load. I've done two loads at 35,000. Field is clear. That one's got about 30, I think, in it. I'm going to take the uh, windrower back, and I'm going to I'm going to buy a mulcher, but I'm going to get um, the uh, Mack Trucker 921. Oh, man, the traffic. The Mack Trucker 921 version, because with my new workshop that we just built, I can change it from uh, mulcher to field roller to grass roller which means I won't have to have a separate mulcher and roller I can just switch it between the two so it's going to cost me for I want to say 41 grand 41 or 43 so it's going to take a bit more money but again this is the point but it will save me having two pieces of equipment so I'll be able to mulch both my fields and then I'll have to look at whether I need ploughing lime again I might have to wait until I've got some lime production underway the problem is ploughing I can't remember if I've got field stones or not we can get our field stones up um, so yeah I'm only prevaricating with other jobs because the uh, silo is not ready yet they are in the process of taking down and transporting. Where are we? That one there. Let's return that. Then we come to here. And rollers. I'm going to get that one. The Dalvo Power Roll 1230 HD Multi Roller. 41 grand. Um, so I want it in mulching configuration I'll leave the tyres as they are I'm going to make this I think galvanised why not and rim colour I'm going to match the uh... yeah the quad track oh blimey okay oh, that's alright to be fair let's buy that 103 grand, but I know I've got two cultivating jobs I can do, so I'm going to make almost all of that back on the two cultivating jobs. So I'm covering the cost of it. The um, forage, I mean, you already saw when I when I put it in, but the forage um, storage was 25 grand. The workshop was five grand. Uh, the silo, I think we're paying. I want to say 25 grand. But it might be because it doesn't need all the bells and whistles. It doesn't need the um, the sweep on the inside. It doesn't need augers or anything like that. It's just the actual shell. Which it could be ten grand. We'll see when we put it in. Let's mulch. Get in. That's something I haven't done actually don't get many weeding contracts but I don't think I've had any mulching ones either that would be quite cool have any mulching contracts? I don't think so and I've, I'm trying to think the last time I had a rock picking one as well which I think would be awesome but oh, you never know they might pop up should go at the speed of the tractor as well. Okay, 15. I thought it was supposed to go faster. Doesn't matter. 15 is pretty good. And I say, and the fact that we can uh, we can switch it between grass roller, mulcher and roller. There is the larger one. They do the, the bigger one as well with all three configurations as well. I'll get this mulched, I'll get the other one mulched, and then we'll get our... That's the only problem, I've got to do this in two different runs back, but... We'll get our straw back, we'll get the mulcher back. I guess the next thing after all of this is going to be... I'm going to need a new shed. I'm not sure how much space, whether I can get a lot of this. If I park it at like a 45 degree or maybe 30 degree angle, I might be able to get a few bits of equipment into that quonset. 
So if I back them in and put them at an angle, we might get a few in. I think our equipment purchases so far have been sensible. They're working. If I find that fence is annoying at any point, I can take that out because I own the land, so I might do. It hasn't been a hindrance so far, but it might be at some point. what we can do while we're here let's have a look at where are we we're here huh. right needs plowing I'm mulching it no stones yet no weeds as yet um, Yeah, I guess we're going to have to look at our nitrogen levels. I am going to have to get the um, soil sampling done as well, aren't I? Maybe I should just bite the bullet on that and get it done. That missed some. Did I not? No, maybe not. Maybe it extends a little bit further than I thought. Forty-two. That one's quite high. Purchase sort information. Three thousand five hundred. Okay, and then that one. Okay. Interesting. And then I suppose the other one we've got is this field up here. Well, at least that'll give me something to go off of. Is it me? I mean, how do you? How do you? How do you feel about it? I, I, I guess there will still be people that will be die-hard. They'll come out with their soil sampling equipment and they'll go across and they'll do their, you know, on the back of a little quad bike or whatever they're doing it with their tractor and go across the field and all their soil sampling the fact that it was made so you could buy the soil information rather than soil sampling yourself do you think generally speaking people just buy it now rather than do the soil sampling do you think it's kind of taken away something a process that people were doing i guess there's that thing isn't it one of the reasons they did it on big maps with big fields doing the manual soil sampling took a long time so I guess they were doing it to give people the option I'm just wondering whether people generally speaking don't bother anymore or whether they, they do still do their soil sampling I guess it'll be a split I guess people I'll get comments from people saying oh yeah I always do it myself and then there'll be plenty of people saying well no there's no point I don't know right we'll get this one mulched the other one mulched get our straw back And I'll look at what I need to do with this. I think I need ploughing anyway. But that will give me some work to do, I guess, when the contracts and stuff start to dry up. I can't really plant anything yet. I could maybe put some... I'm still in, this, in the window for putting wheat in the ground, aren't I? 
just about. I've got a planting season in September for wheat. But in all honesty, as we get into the winter months and I can't do any more planting, and once contracts all run out, as long as the ground doesn't freeze up too hard, I could then sort out these fields. So get whatever... Um, whatever ploughing, fertilising, cultivating, anything needs to be done. Uh, I know some people aren't happy about the fact I <coughs> I still use the um, farm supply pack by the law. And I bought that pallet for five grand. My intention is... Um, to, to buy from other sources or make my own. I'm not going to keep buying those. Um, I'm just thinking now, should I go over and buy that, that fertilising point now anyway? I'll do it. I'll do it now. I'm going to keep an eye on the contract situation. If I get any more cultivating, ploughing, I mean anything really, anything that pops up. I'll jump on whatever I can. Because I want to listen to my audio book. Well, that's the weeds dealt with. Uh, mulching is done. So weeds are sorted out here. We have got stones underneath the liming that's there. So 52 is done. 16, uh, sorry, 15 and 21 are all cleared. Let's fold that away. And let's move on to somewhere nice and warm to sleep tonight. As we're gonna be moving into October, it's gonna get a bit chillier. And I don't think the tent is the best idea. So, let's remove that. I don't know what to do with that. I've got those deduction things. I might put one of those down. Maybe over by the workshop. Are they tin cans and stuff like that? I'm trying to remember. Um, what's it under? Decoration, is it? There we go. So, daily deduction. What do we reckon? Per day should I be paying for that? Should we go with 50 to start off with? Does that seem enough? Or is that taking the mick a little bit? Or 100? We'll go with 100. Where can we place that? It's going to let me put it. Just a little box somewhere. It doesn't matter, does it? There we go. So that little box, just there, that will deduct 100 a day from my finances to cover leasing of the fertiliser spreader. If that's not enough, I can always increase it, put another box down or change it for an oil can or something like that. But that daily deductions thing, yeah, that'll work. We'll do that. I know I said in the last episode about doing it, so I think I'm happy with that. What we'll do now then, let's move this out of the way. I know I did put on the video yesterday, I do apologise for the noise of the class. When I was driving it and doing all the harvesting in the last episode, I, I thought, yeah, it's, it's loud, it's, it's, you know. So when I came to edit it, blimey, it was bonkers. And the problem is, I'm in that situation again where, where people will say, oh, just turn the volume of the vehicles down. That's fine, I could do it while I'm driving this, but then that turns down all the vehicle volume. So the ones that are normal, that are fine, drop really quietly, and this one's quite loud. So the problem is, I'm going to have to come all the way out here, It's 
to keep out of the way. Right. So what we'll do, um, I'll sort out storing all these bits and bobs, mulches and trailers and things in here. So I can drive through and as I said, maybe drive in and park them at angles. Maybe I can maybe do either side as well. So I'll get some stuff stored away. That'll be more relevant when the winter hits, when we get the... I'm, I'm really curious to see what we're going to look at snow-wise. So once that's done, um, then I'm going to move on to get the glad cultivating jobs done. Actually, I've done more than I was intending to. So I reckon here yeah, should work, shouldn't it? It was 10,000 we were paying. I like it. it. It fits. Like I say, I can I can still put into these. Um, I can run an auger for taking out at an angle kind of this way. So it's not in the way. <laughs> oh, man. Absolutely perfect. Recycling bins. Not quite the recycling bins we have, but, you know, we are recycling bins. Brilliant. Well, that's that sorted out. Um, next. Yeah, I might as well get on with those cultivating jobs. See if anything else has popped up while we've been uh, doing that. That one and that one. A bit more harvesting that could be done if I wanted to, but in all honesty, I'll focus on these. Then we'll see what happens as we move into October. Um, and then I need to work out what I'm going to do about these. This one doesn't need, let me just double check that as well. This one doesn't need. Um, right. Well, that's interesting because it's not showing us mulch just got rid of the weeds oh maybe we'll do it once if i take the stones thing off i don't know okay um well, i guess it wasn't mulch technically i've just removed the weeds using the mulcher which has worked out all right doesn't need plowing uh stones could do with being removed so maybe we'll get a rock picker at some point and if we zoom out of there so where were we? That one's done. If I take that off, that doesn't need ploughing either. So we could seed directly into those, although I want to get some fertiliser on. That one is going to need ploughing. If I take that off, it's mulched. Yeah, so I'm thinking... I'm never sure. I always thought when you got precision farming on, that you do your... Um, nitrogen first a lot of people still message me to say they're not nitrogen my ph level the lime in that you should do that when the crops in the ground but i'm pretty sure lime kills off the crops i'm sure you're supposed to lime first ph value is not good on here so although that looks like it's been limed not so good and our fertilizing needs to be done once the seeds put in the ground so we'll worry about that later on right so i'm gonna head down um Actually, I'm going to drive my tractor down because I need to pick up the plough as well. And then we'll go and start one of those cultivating jobs, I guess. What I need to do now is work out where I'm going to put everything. We've got room to get in and out.
I'm here at field six for the first of my cultivating contracts. This is a fairly big field. I mean, it's a fairly big cultivator, I guess. Well, I say that <laughs> on the scale of the, the, the field. Got this chunk there, that chunk there, then that whole whole hot mess. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's not a small cultivator, but on the scale of the fields, I guess it's um, <laughs> it does make it seem like a tiny boat on a large ocean, doesn't it? And off we go. Never a big fan of starting off the edges. <laughs> Mind you, to be fair, you haven't got to be too precise when you're doing contract stuff because it does, like I said before, it does give you a bit of leeway. So you can get away with it to a degree. Well, I have to say, I'm very, very pleased with what we've got done today. How much we've got done. The new stuff we've put in, admittedly. The work that I put in previously has paid for a lot. You know, we were on 100 and what, we were on 165 when I started this episode today. We're down to 84. But again, I think we've spent wisely. We haven't gone mad. We haven't paid out too much. Can we improve on the stuff we've got? Of course we can. We can go bigger, we can go smarter, we can go newer. At some point, if I decide actually, you know, the silo living's nice, it's better than a tent, absolutely. Do I want to have myself a nice fancy house? Then maybe we can go down that route, but for the time being, it will do. I'm thinking as well, um, I've got room in that little concept. As we start to get bigger machinery, we're going to need more space. But I was thinking of maybe getting a second concept, because it'd fit quite nicely. Um, for the harvester. I have got the harvester in there, I managed to fit it in, but as we start to increase the amount of machinery we've got and equipment we own, and especially if we do start to go for larger equipment and machinery, we are going to need more space, so that's going to be something to look at moving further down the line. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether or not that field that I just took the weeds out of, whether or not to grass that. I might plant grass and have that as an extension to the farm rather than a field to put crops in maybe again it's just an idea at the moment we'll give it some thought i mean i suppose i could put a crop in it now and then later on change it over if i wanted to we shall see so cultivating will continue probably late into the day if any more contracts pop up if not i guess i'll see you in october for whatever joystick excitement that brings <laughs> whatever types of contracts um, my like, my concern now is when contracts do dry up as we do get into the winter months i'm not sure what i'm going to do because my default would normally be to defer to doing a bit of logging and a bit of wood chipping um with, you know there's a bit of scope to do stuff with wood chips and you know with lumber and things like that but, because I, I don't have um, an income, an income stream. That's what I've always said, you know, whatever, whatever farm you're on, whatever location you're at, you generally speak, you'll find that revenue stream, you'll find that income that works, and it works well on whichever map you're on, and you can do all right, you know, you can make some good money. I don't have a revenue stream yet, so it could be the first winter might be a little bit bleak, and then we'll... Um, hopefully pick up as we move into next year but yeah i don't know we'll see i hope you enjoyed it if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>